uh, welcome you to today's online class. Last class, we, you know, in our previous classes, we have discussed a lot. We have looked at cooperative society, public enterprise, limited liability company. So today, we are looking at trade association and other enterprise. Talking about trade association, I believe the knowledge from cooperative society will enable us to understand this very topic better. There are different associations out there and some of them might be cooperative or why some might not be cooperative society but their activities are similar to that of cooperative society. So we are looking at trade association and other enterprise. And before I move forward, I remain a gracious abaco. And I trust you are all staying safe out there. Our objectives for today's class, just four of them, the first is to define trade association, define chamber of commerce, identify the aims of chamber of commerce, state the functions of trade associations. So this should be our take home at the end of today's lesson. Now, that's much ado, let's go straight to trade association. In cooperative society, we need to understand that, you know, when people come together to pool their resources in order to see how they can improve the welfare of their members. But today, we are also looking at something that is very, very close to that. But in this case, it has to do with the traders. Now, when it comes to cooperative society, there we found out that we have about four or five of them. Here we have the producer, the wholesaler, the retailer, the consumer. That was the uh, pet and trade society. About five of them, so to say. So let's go straight. Trade association, also known as industry trade group, business association, or sector association. Trade associations are formed by business which are engaged in same or similar trade. They are organized on a non-profit basis. Now, this kind of association has to do with people who engage in the same line of business. It could be a professional, a professional or let's say traders. Now, examples we have here, we have the taxi driver associations. Now, this is an association of taxi drivers. They come together to see how they can promote the interests of their member. And most importantly about the corporate society is more of the welfare of the member. But here is more of the interests, how they can move their business forward. They come up with different ideas. Let's say if there's a new development or there's an innovation, they see how they can communicate this among their members or in cases where we might have like some of these professional bodies for instance let's say the nigerian medical association now with the essence of coming together one of the reasons could be to eliminate or to reduce okay um, all those fake or quack professionals now you know in the medical field for instance we have some quacks that engage in it we also have the uh, nigeria bar association then we have um ICANN, which is a uh, institute of chartered accountants of nigeria all these are examples of trade association but the thing is just that these ones that i've mentioned they are professional bodies but they are still classified under this trade association you see they have uh, the same background the same trade okay they are in the same industries now we know that yes they come together to promote the interests of their members now let's move further now we have issues that may be discussed by trade association now when they come together when they hold their meeting what are these things they normally discuss number one of them is they try to discuss let's say raw material prices or shortage 
Now, in corporate society, where we talked about the producers' corporate society, yeah, we realized that one of the reasons they could come together as a cooperative, I mean, as a cooperative could be either to buy raw materials, let's say, uh, in bulk, and by so doing, they're able to buy it at a cheaper rate. Now, here, there might be some things that are ongoing in the business world or in the national economy that is not helping their business to thrive well. So when they come together, they discuss it and see how they can tackle it. They will come up with solutions and then move forward. So we have the raw material price or shortage. If they are not okay with the price, they see how they can discuss it and probably influence the price. If there's a shortage of raw materials, they see how they can utilize or influence an increase in production. Now we have these infrastructural issues. This has to do with government. You know, government they are in charge of providing all these basic infrastructures. A situation where these things are not readily available to enable the business to move forward. They see how they can come together, discuss the issue, and probably present it before the government to the government. So that the government can come up with solutions for the progress of their business. Then labor issues and legislations. Legislations, talking about laws that guide the laborers. If they are not okay with it, they will discuss it and then tackle it. Then we have legislation affecting the interest of members. Yes, these are laws that come from the national assemblies if they are not okay with it if it does not all go well with their business they discuss it and see how they can tackle it then we have this unfair competition now remember that this association has to do with people that are in the same line of business and of course this implies that these people here they might be into a competition so if there is an unfair competition among themselves then they see how they can tackle it. Then we have emerging opportunities in business. So if there is a new development, okay, they discuss it and see how they can tap into it for the benefits of their members. Now we have the features, the features, the characteristics of this trade association. Now the first on our list is voluntary association. Talking about voluntary association, you know, in this case, no one is forced to join. Okay, there is no um, dress. You are not. Uh, you, you are not. Uh, I mean, forced to join. You're not to join without your free, without your consent. So it must be from you. If you decide to join, fine. But if you don't feel like you can stay on your own. But remember, there are benefits attached to it. Non-profit motive. They do not come together for profit purpose. They just come to see how they can, you know, promote the interest and see how their business can move forward and see how their voice can be heard against any bad policies or against anything that is not helping their business to move forward. Then name. So the associations are generally named after the nature of the business. Just like we mentioned the drivers, the Z driver association, you can see that it tells you that that association comprises of people who are taxi drivers. It is simple and straight. So from the name, you can tell the line of business the members are into, the tailor association, etc. Then identity, so members retain their individual identity. Now, the fact that they are a member of this association does not mean that they cannot retain their name. Now, when we say the Taxi Driver Association, for instance, it does not mean that the driver okay, cannot retain his own identity. His identity is different from that of the association. So he remains the driver of his own taxi. He, he does not op, uh, operate his business using the identity or the name of the association. Then we have independence. Yes, 
the members here they are completely independent if as a taxi driver you are completely independent of the association your essence or your I mean your reason for joining them is to get informations ideas innovations to re to know how you can do better and earn more money then the objective is to promote the interest of their member that is self-explanatory the aims and objectives you know from what we have said so far about the definition the features and then talking about um, the issues that are discussed we can easily tell the aims and objectives the straightforward the first here is to ensure that members provide quality services now you know one thing about these professional bodies that we have in this, for instance is that if um let's say a member okay who is operating let, let me use regular example now let's say we have um uh, let's say the teachers let's say the lawyers the doctors for instance under the doctors we have the nma and under this nma they try to see that the members they are professional in carrying or discharging their duties to make sure that they don't have quacks joining them and you know what happened here is that if any of the members should by chance drag the name of that association you know into the mud it will not speak well of that association so when they come together part of the thing they do is that they share ideas now one thing about ideas or information is that it helps you to be a better person it helps you to do something better than the way you ought to do it so this is one of the ways they do that to ensure that member provide quality services two to ensure that member charge uniform price yes they might come up with that idea that okay let's see how we can have a uniform price you know so that they can as well uh, be uh, speak with the same voice yes it happens if you go to the market for instance all those open markets here we have all those uh, gary sellers or crawlers they usually have their meetings and part of the thing they discuss in their meeting to see how they can have a uniform price and if you go to market to say for instance you are buying let's say a model of gary you realize that all these gary sellers their price are usually almost the same even though there is difference the difference might not, might not be much you go to uh, mrs a you want to buy gary the price might be a model 200 you go to miss b it might be the same but if i thought there's any difference the difference will not be much now to maintain professional ethics of their line of trade earlier at the first time where i was trying to mention the nigeria medical association and the rest it's what they call professionalism okay in carrying out or in discharging their duty or in carrying in carrying on with their business for instance they have to what make sure that they follow the guideline that is expected of them they know what to say as regarding their profession they know when to say and when not to say certain things so these are the things that are concerned talking about the professional ethics talking about the rules and regulation that is expected of our individual now to supply member with information about development in their line of trade now the the the, the life or the world we are in now is a dynamic world in the sense that things changes over time now the way things have been done in time past especially as of 10 15 years ago is not the same it's been done today a very good example is the banking sector now the banking sector like 20 30 years back you can ask your parents they will tell you that they were not used to this system of atm online transaction they were not used to them but today as a result of innovations you can make transaction you know from the comfort of your home so one of the essence of coming together as an association is that they tend to know the new ways of doing things so that they will not be left behind five to assist members who are in need yes sometimes one of the way they can assist their member might be giving out loans yes giving out loans 
So if there's any member that is in need and the member speaks out, they can as well assist the member financially. There are other ways they can as well assist their members. Now to defend and advance the interests of <coughs> members. Yes. Um let's still use that policy to explain it. If there is a certain laws on ground that does not favor this their business, okay, they see how they can come up with it. Or let's say a member of the association is being treated unfairly by the government. Yes, this is where they come up as a body to defend the member. Seven, to act as pressure groups in order to influence some government policies. Now, pressure groups here, they are known as advocate group. These are organized groups that try to influence the policies of government in a particular area. So, they can as well, you know, it is very easy to approach the government when they can all speak with one voice. So, and because they are important when it comes to the contribution to the nation's economy cannot be overemphasized. At some point in time, governments will definitely listen to them. A very good example we have the Nigeria Medical Association, we have the ASU, Association of um, Staff or Universities of also. All these universities, lecturers, for instance, once in a while you hear that universities they go on strike. They are trying to speak with one voice, pressuring the, pressuring the government to obey or do certain things that would be to their favor. Eight, to create uniformity in the way members deal with people. Yes, to have a singular way of dealing with the people. You know, we made mention of price earlier. That can be actually one of the ways the uh, members can deal with the people. When they have a uniform price, it tells that, yes, these people, they are well organized. Now, functions of trade association. The first here is that they collect and disseminate information to members. Yes, they see how they can get information and then they share it among their members. They settle disputes among members. You know, one thing about human beings is that there will definitely be conflicts. These parts cannot be overruled. So one way or the other, there is going to be conflict. Now remember that the trade association has to do it. The coming together of people in the same line of business. So let's say there is a competition between A and B. And in order to resolve that, these people that try to speak with one voice, it is easily resolved when they come together as um, a member. Okay? So one of the essence is to set a dispute among members. They put political pressure on governments for the interest of their member. That is good. They carry research and publish reports for member use. Now, you know, currently the nation is dealing with coronavirus or COVID-19. Now, when it came in, when it started, or when the when the when the uh, when it started, so to say, you realize that this is a new disease of uh, those in the medical field let's say at the time it came out they had little or no knowledge about it but today i think they have known so much about it due to the fact that they have carried out a lot of research about this pandemic and you can see today they can offer you their professional advice wash your hand um, stay indoor don't shake hands all this is as a result of the research that they have carried. And this, they were able to what, disseminate among their members. Now it became something that everyone is now used to. Five, they educate members. Yes, they educate members as time goes on. Then six, they provide credit facilities and assistance to members. They give out loan, can give out loan if need be. Uh, let's see another aspect of this uh, businessmen coming together. Now we have Chamber of Commerce. Now please take notes. Trade association has to do with people 
or businessmen in the same line of trade okay now you know an industry is a collection of firm okay so trade association is much more concerned about a particular industry now chamber of commerce is like a bigger version of the trade association in the sense that it accommodates different industry it does not restrict how do i even put it to us like what i'm trying to say here is that it does not discriminate in the sense that they allow people from this different line of it to come and be a member of this very group here it says chamber of commerce also known as board of trade is a network of business people from different line of business or commercial field members come together to have trade connections as well as further their business interests now if you can see that the aims and objectives are likely the same with that of trade association but the meaning itself is just in terms of the membership the membership here is a broad one compared to trade association but as we go further we'll get to find out the difference between chamber of commerce and trade association so chamber of commerce can be either national or international you can have um, let's say for instance here in abuja you can have a waripa or uh, chamber of commerce you can have an abuja chamber of commerce you can have nigeria chamber of commerce so you can see from region to state to the national level so it tends to you know differ it has to do with the people or the businessmen in a particular area in a particular location this is what chamber of commerce is about all right the examples now to help and they have very a good understanding we have some on the examples here the first here is the london chamber of commerce of course it has to do with the businesses different businesses located in london then we have international chamber of commerce lagos chamber of commerce we have ibadan chamber of commerce nigeria america chamber of commerce or your chamber of commerce all right let's look at your objectives the objectives they are very similar to that of the trade association so i will just be very fast about this so to promote commercial activities in the community town or country yes they try to see how they can promote commercial activity which is the buying and selling businesses okay they promote it you know one thing about promoting business is that people tend to know more about that business and when people do it definitely increase the number of buyers those that will end up patronizing the very products so the community town country streets two to influence the policy of government relating to commercial activities in that area as said earlier policy here has to do with those rules and regulations that come from government as to how business activities are to be carried out so they try to influence it to their own favor or in case they are not okay with that of the government say uh, government this is it we are not okay with it there should be an amendment three to further business interests of the area yes you know it tries to now to see yes just like promoting business to see promoting business okay what it does here is that the area that is in concern okay the business interests of that area tend to be heightened tend to increase as time go by then to unite people engaged in trade yes i think the unity is something that is very very important when people are united there is nothing they cannot do okay okay when they come together in unity we can as well achieve a lot to maintain uniformity in rules to collect and disseminate information information that will be of benefit to the members to see how they can disseminate it among members function of chamber of commerce the first here is to promote trade fairs and exhibitions yes trade fairs and exhibitions is like a trade show where they are 
people come together to promote, to exhibit, to showcase their products. Okay, to showcase their product. This is what um Chamber of Commerce does. Now, from time to time, you hear that there's a trade fair in social place. I think in some places they have a period they normally organize that. Okay, they will, they will come there for just a short period of time, some case maybe a week, maybe two weeks or less than that. And during that period, you can even get their product at a very cheap price. So they exhibit their product to promote home and foreign trade, to collect and disseminate information to members, settlement of disputes among members, then they educate members on government legislations. Yes, they talk to governments about, I mean, to talk to their members about the various laws or regulation that is guiding um, their very business. Okay? All right, let me look at the difference. Okay, this will, this will give us a better understanding of uh, trade association and chamber of commerce. Let's look at the difference. The scope here. It says, um, first, under trade association, it consists of business firms operating in the same industry. Yes, it consists of business firms operating in the same industry. Yes. Industry is the collection of firms. Okay, why well, firm is just a unit of production. So what industry is the collection of firm? So people that are engaged in the same line of business are people you can find in trade association. Chamber of Commerce, yes, it is wider in scope and consists of different firms or industries. Let's see in this same chamber of commerce. You can have those who are into the production of clothes. You can have them there. You can have those who are into the production of toys. You can have them there. You can as well have those who are into the production of, uh, let's say, um, laptops, as the case may be. These are different people you can find in the Chamber of Commerce. The nature of member firm. It's a various, under the session, you say various firms which constitute membership are essentially competitors yes now when people are engaged in the same line of business what here and they are coming together to have a meeting it means here that if they are in the same line of business it means that what i mean or you know naturally there is this human instinct okay there is this human instinct that okay you would want to be ahead of your colleagues this competition is always there you just don't want to be the last person you want to be ahead i know people come into business to see how they can make profits so in this case those in this association though they may come together but they're also trying to see how we can do better than the others in terms of buying and selling they want to see how they can make more profit than the other person then Chamber of Commerce members are not competitors. If I am selling yam and Mr. B is selling Gary, we don't have any relationship because I know my customer for yams, they will come. And his own part, his customer for Gary, they will also come. So this is where the difference is. Then representation. On that trade association, it said it protects or represents the interest of a particular trade or industry. Here, if we have the yam sellers in this association now, what they will be thinking of or doing is to see how they can promote the sales of yam in that community or in the country, as the case may be. This is their concern. They are not promoting those selling Gary. They're not promoting those that are selling okra or whatsoever. They are only concerned about those that are selling yam. This is their focus. This is their interest. But well, that is contrary when it comes to Chamber of Commerce. Theirs is just to see how they can promote business in that particular location. To see how a business can thrive in a particular location. Then structure. It contains business firm operating in different regions. I said, yeah, let's say, talking about in Nigeria, for instance, we have the Nigeria Bar Association, 
We have the Nigeria Medical Association, for instance. Now, you see, it comprises of people from different states in Nigeria. It's not it's not concerned about just a state alone. It's concerned about everybody that is in that profession in the country. Now, but that is quite different from Chamber of Commerce. Though they might have branches, okay, branches in other states, but they speak with one voice. The headquarter, the decision is made from the headquarter, and such is transferred to other sub region But it doesn't mean here that, okay, um, if for instance we have the Lagos states, we have the Edo state, no. There is no discrimination in that regard. They are the same. Now, they do that the possibility of them mixing all together, that is where, that is the way they have um, had to come up with the uh, states, the region. Okay, so they might have members from each of these states representing them in the national headquarter. But when it comes to chamber of commerce, you see they are much more concerned about. The region they are not concerned if for instance we have uh, the Oyo chamber of commerce that chamber of commerce is much more concerned about trade business in Oyo states it has no business with any trade in other states any goals no it has no business with that it is much more concerned about the business in Oyo state or we have Guaripa chamber of commerce for instance here this uh, this um, association is much more concerned about business in Guarepa. It has no concern with business in, let's say, Wuse or let's say, Metama. No, it has no business with that. It is only concerned with business in Guarepa. Then, name. Now, you said it is known on that trade association. You can easily tell. This is one of the uh, easiest way you can distinguish between trade association and Chamber of Commerce, through its name. For instance, on that trade association, you can say Drivers Association. Quickly, you will know that yes, this has to do with trade association because they are in the same line of business. By the time you start mentioning Lagos State Chamber of Commerce or the Chamber of Commerce, you will know that yes, this is Chamber of Commerce. It is easy to distinguish using the name okay this is where i will stop today um i thank you so much for your attention uh this is the assignment for this week the first is what is chamber of commerce what is chamber of commerce two state six functions of chamber of commerce um lastly state three functions of manufacturing association now what i expect you to do in this number three okay is that you you know research into it this has to do with the manufacturing association of nigeria so you can research more and then work on it the first one here is a little mistake which is what it ought to be what is chamber of commerce and not what chamber of commerce it's a type of, uh, typographical error. So, um, some of you um, fail to submit your assignment via the Google Classroom. I don't know, maybe you don't have, don't, don't know the code. So, I'm using this platform to send you the code. The Google Classroom code, the Zoom class ID, and the password. So, tomorrow, I hope to see you guys on the Zoom class. Catch you next week. Do stay safe. Thank you for your time.